If you want, it's Emily Fox. Today's video is going to be all about Goodread books that I don't agree with the rating. It's going to be about the ones that are rated higher than I gave them. And I've done that in the past. I'll link that down below. And I feel like at this point, we're getting lower. And I feel like my opinions might become more and more controversial, which hopefully will make things interesting in the comment section. Feel free to agree or disagree politely in the comment section. It's always the most interesting part when we get to discuss are more controversial opinions. So let's get to it. Last time I ended uh, with The Last Wish, which was the short story collection in the Witcher series. So we're gonna keep going from that point on. If you see a little beast in the background, this is Charlie. He is a little pot of glue right now. Eh, it's put cal, it's put cal. Okay, we're gonna start pretty easy. I have Cinder, which is the first book in the Lunar Chronicle. I feel like this used to be so so popular on booktube. Everyone was obsessed with why fantasy and sci-fi books, well mostly fantasy, and this was a really popular retelling, kind of cyborg <laughs> Cinderella, and it was fine for what it was. To be honest, even at the time, I read it in 2016, and even at the time I felt too old for it, so I just felt like I should have read this when I was 12 or something to have a chance to enjoy it. I have to <laughs> my laptop from Charlie. Stop trying to step on it! So the average rating is 4.13. Someone corrected me that you're not supposed to say 4.13. Thanks for letting me know. I speak French and frankly you don't want to know how we do numbers in French. Like <laughs> 98 in French is 98, which is 42008. So like, I'll follow your rules, that's fair. So 4.13, uh, I gave it three stars and that was at the time, like seven years ago. And I was not as harsh in my critiques. So I hadn't read in forever. So I feel like I wasn't aware yet of what was a three stars for me, and you know? So yeah, to me, it wasn't a bad book. It was just incredibly forgettable. And I think it's a great example of, you know those YA books that are like super thick, but you read them and nothing happens. It's just like, the writing is humongous. There's like two sentences per page. And like, it was fine though. Just, I gave it three stars and the average is four point. One three, so much lower than the average. Right underneath that, I don't feel like anyone has talked about that book. It's a nonfiction called The Witches Are Coming. It's like a feminist nonfiction. Don't read it. Uh, at the time, I think it was published in 2021, it felt super dated, like 10 years too late. Like nothing new was brought up in there. So don't, don't waste your time. Uh, an unpopular opinion, I've mentioned it because I read it in 2021. So Sunlin Ascends. The average is still 4.13 and I gave it two. This was such a huge disappointment for me. This made it actually to my most disappointing books of 2021. Because I thought I was going to give it five stars. I waited years to get to it. I, you know, got this really pretty edition and it just doesn't work for me. So like, I wasn't emotionally invested. There were a few tropes that I wasn't a fan of and just really wasn't my thing, unfortunately. I, that broke my heart. The book is not even long, but it dragged on. So yeah, not for me, sadly. Ooh, one that might be controversial, the Handmaid's Tale. I also read this in 2000, well, 2017, and I gave it three stars at a time, and the average is still 4.13. <sighs> Listen, I feel like, again, at the time, I wasn't as critical, as harsh in my reviews, and I feel like with the distance now, I would probably review it differently, but from what I remember, I believe the author only used things that have happened in the world to create this fictional book. But from the critiques that I've heard is that she is using whatever happened to women of color and then put it in a book where it happens to white women for white women to have empathy. <laughs> That's what I've heard. I would have to look into it. But it kind of rang true, to be honest. And I felt like my experience of the book, I rate my books based on my enjoyment, right? And I did not enjoy myself. I didn't feel like the writing was great. I felt like it was kind of boring. And I know that it's sometimes what the author means for you to feel because the main character is so like numb from everything, but it just didn't feel like it was the case to me. I don't know. I feel like I didn't feel the emotions that I should have felt while reading it. I was bored. I didn't think it was that great. Frankly, if it hadn't been like The Handmaid's Tale and I had read it, I would have completely disregarded it. I don't think I would have finished it. I was bored. I said it. So at the time I gave it three stars and I still feel like looking back, it's kind of generous. 
I feel like that one is gonna hurt, um, but it is what it is. <laughs> one that I feel like it's 100% me, not the book, is a memory called Empire. Still the same rating, I give it three stars, and I just was not as emotionally invested in it as I thought I would be. I do think this is a great adult sci-fi, kind of like political intrigue, mystery-ish. This, everyone seems to love it. And for some reason, like I said, I just didn't connect with it. It's 100% a me thing. This one, I can acknowledge that it's a good book, just wasn't for me. Which is surprising because I love sci-fi, but wasn't for me. Sometimes you read a book and you realize that, again, you're not the target audience. That's kind of what happened with Will My Cat Eat My Eyeballs? It's a nonfiction about death. I didn't realize that uh, it was for children. So I gave it three stars, but I, again, fully acknowledge I'm just not the target audience. So it is what it is. The next one. I'm constantly asked to read some Karen Slaughter. Not gonna do it, not gonna do it. I did read The Good Daughter and I read another one by her in, um, was it something Pretty Girl? I can't do it. I find her books super triggering. I feel like I never thought I would read a book and I would be like, this is too much. Karen Slaughter is it for me. I find her books really sexually violent in almost like in a gratuitous way, like it's too much. Like it's for the shock value or something. I don't feel like they're that good. Again, to me, that is super controversial, I know. But it just didn't justify how intense they were. I, again, they're just not for me. I fully acknowledge that. So yeah, still the average at 4.13. I give it three stars. And I listened to that one as an audiobook and don't freaking do it. There are a couple scenes that like, you do not want to listen to that. You just don't. So yeah, I will never read anything else by her. It was an accident that I ended up reading this one because I read the other one and then I was looking for an audiobook at the library, saw this one, the ratings were great and I didn't connect that it was the same author and <laughs> it was the last time. Never again, never again. Still at the same rating. Uh, this is your brain on birth control. I read this last year. This made it, I think, to my most disappointing books. No, actually, I don't think I included it nonfiction, but I did do a video where I reviewed all the nonfiction books that I've read that year and this one was a disappointment because of the author. I think this is a really important topic. I think it's important to reflect on the side effects, like she mentions. Uh, I do think that we need a lot more research, but I do think that birth control is incredibly important for various reasons. I, I'm not trying to get it banned or anything, but I felt like this was a case where the author is the wrong person to write the book because I found that the tone was really off and like tone pulsing women, blah, blah. I get it, but I looked into the author and she's affiliated to, I think it's a Christian university and like, it felt very patronizing at times. And like, she does say that the word is ugly and that pissed me off. And that's just one of the like hundreds of example. Like in the intro, she literally says that this book is for everyone, even feminists, which that, you know, right there, I almost didn't have to fuck because like, says that um so yeah just to give you an example but i do again like the topic hated the author so i gave it three stars which again feels generous i am on the lookout for more books on that topic but i don't really recommend that one because of it there are some good bits but it doesn't compensate for the rest okay we're finally going down at 4.12 uh, we have the giver and i wanted to talk about it because this is one of the few books that i had to read in english in school in high school i didn't speak english okay <laughs> i just didn't and i understood absolutely nothing when i read the book like literally would recognize like two words per page but we did watch the movie which helped i still didn't understand much but helped and i wanted to reread the books that I had to read in high school in English because I wanted to understand them and I'm planning on doing a video one day on that but I obviously liked it more as an adult because I understood but I still find the ending incredibly annoying like I hate open endings I don't think it's a spoiler nowadays it has been like open I think there are two or three more books now that have been added but originally it was written as a standalone and I hate open endings there are a few exceptions now that I've found after reading, you know, a million more books, but this is so annoying and kind of cruel to make your kids in school read this. <laughs> so unsatisfying. Uh, but yes, it, it was fine for what it was. It's definitely a children's book though. I feel like it could be interesting in terms of like what can be discussed, but obviously we didn't discuss any of that in school. So um, another nonfiction that I'm seeing is I'll Be Gone in the Dark. Okay, this is once again a, it's just not for me. I'm not the target audience. I don't really care for, uh, what, what's the name? Like the murder mysteries with the real life one, like the crime podcast and everything. I feel like half the women are obsessed with. Um, I just don't care, um, but I wanted to try it. It was part of the Goodreads reading challenge I was doing and it was fine. No hard feelings, just not for me. 
I'm seeing City of Ash by Cassandra Clare, which is book two in the Mortal Instruments series. Sim still the same rating. I give it three stars at the time. Um, frankly, I probably would give it one at this point, but it was one of the first book series I tried when I started booktube and I really wanted to love it because everyone seemed to give it five stars. I read book one. I was not impressed with the writing style. I didn't really care for the story that much. I feel like the world building was not well developed. People will come for me. I don't care. I don't think it was. And I hated the ending. Like, the twist was stupid. We're just gonna say it. It was stupid. And I read book two pretty much just so that twist would be, you know, explained, removed. Like, we all know that's not true. But... <laughs> I read book two and hated it even more because there's the romance, which is like the poor best friend that is friend zone is a trope that needs to die and you still didn't have the explanation. And then I started book three and gave up. I gave up on the whole series. I've officially got rid of all of the books that she has written that I owned. So it's not going to happen. But yes, at the time I gave it three stars. Um, and yeah, I don't think it's that great. I'm, yeah, I don't care. I feel like I used to be kind of gentle in the way I would... Sometimes I give my reviews. Now I don't care. I think it it sucks. The writing style is sucks. The characters suck. The story sucks. Everything sucks. To me. <laughs> um, I'm seeing good ones though as I'm scrolling. Like I just saw The Laugh of Evan, which is underrated. The picture of Dorian Gray. I don't think it's that controversial that I gave it three stars uh, and the average is still 4.12. I think it's good classic. I understand... Uh, you know, the beauty of it. There, there was one chapter that needs to be skipped uh, when he's describing everything he likes. <laughs> Nobody needs a whole chapter that is essentially a list. Um, but I think I personally would have enjoyed it more almost as a short story than a 250 page novel. But, you know, classics are long. People had nothing else to do. So didn't have YouTube, you know? <laughs> so yeah, it was fine. I'm glad I read it. But I didn't keep my copy because it was ugly. That was, it was this edition. I would own a copy if it was pretty, but it's fine. Ooh, okay. Classic sci-fi. I like to read them because I can appreciate, you know, where it started compared to today, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and I read Childhood's End, which really popular. Again, 4.12. But I personally hated a lot of it, but I enjoyed the first story. Like it's separated in three parts. The first one was good. There's a twist at the end of that first part that was great. And afterwards it just becomes too weird for me. And like, I love sci-fi, so I love weird, but this is too, too much for me, too, too much. And with classic sci-fi in general, the writing tends to be really dry. And in this one, there's definitely some sexism, racism, homophobia. I don't remember about the homophobia, but definitely racism and sexism. And I, I've accepted that it's the case in most of them, but it's still worth mentioning because I do review books through a modern lens. I think it's fine to do that. Um, so yeah, didn't hate it, but I don't think it's a 4.12 book. <laughs> the ending is just too weird, like straight up too weird. What else could be controversial? Uh, ooh, okay, controversial if you know me, uh, but Record of a Spaceborn Few by Vicky Chambers. She is one of my all-time favorite authors. I think she does fantastic, wholesome sci-fi. And I read them mostly for the vibes. It is what it is. Uh, this is probably my least favorite by her. I'm trying to think. I think so. Um, because it's, it's kind of, <laughs> it's loosely related to the rest of the series. You're following these people on a spaceship, you know, remnant of humanity, and it's fine. Nothing great happens. I don't feel like it has the wholesome vibes of her other books. I do appreciate the representation. There is a older lesbian couple, which I feel most of her books do contain some representation, but this was refreshing, uh, but that's, that's kind of it. It was kind of forgettable. Definitely not my favorite by her. I still give it three stars, though. Like, it wasn't awful. I will still read everything she ever comes out with, but, you know. Quickly, at 4.11, we have Sea of Tranquility. I've had a few people ask me how I felt about it. I feel kind of mad about Emily St. John, St. John Mendel. Um, they're fine, just I find them a little too disjointed and the writing style is very, you know, flowy for me. And I find myself finishing her books and being like, what was the point? <laughs> Which again, I know it's just, a, it, it, they're just not for me. And that's okay, that's okay. I just, not my vibe, there you go. This one is probably not controversial. Uh, still the same rating, but The Unseen World. I have not seen anyone talk about this book in years. I read it in uh, 2020 actually, 
probably, was it for a challenge? Because I had gotten this one in 2017 or added it to my TBR according to Goodreads and I haven't seen anyone talk about it. I found it super forgettable. Like I'm struggling to remember. I know it's like a daughter who uh, her father passed away and she's trying to discover like some kind of mystery about him and she's super intelligent, but like so forgettable. I will never speak about that book again. Like <laughs> I gave it three and the average again, 4.11. So read that one last year, but A Fatal Grace by Louise Penny. I don't think that's that controversial, even though the average is 4.10. I, listen, not every book will have aged well, and this one is really bad. <laughs> and at least people are agreeing in the comment section on Goodreads, which, you know, um, the fat phobia. I do acknowledge that I don't always notice everything. I feel like there are some things that we need to learn to notice and I feel like that was one for me but in this one it's so flagrant like it's it's in your face it's rubbed in your face after just a couple chapters you've had so many instances of like violently describing these characters as being overweight and like it's just so gratuitous once again it's just so intense uh that it's impossible not to notice I feel like from a 2023 lens it's just way too intense and then you add the fact that the story was kind of boring it's definitely not the best one uh, so yeah, I've read three books by her. I'm done with this series. I do love the French Canadian vibes because yay representation, but I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I need to continue the TV show. I've only watched the first episode. Uh, another classic sci-fi, do Androids dream of electric sheep? Sometimes I wonder if people actually read the book. <laughs> do people just rate this because they've watched a the movie Blade Runner? Is it what it is? Am I being mean about it? Probably, but I found it it was fine. It was fine. If it wasn't the book, I wouldn't be talking about it. I feel like I, <laughs> that sounds really harsh, but let's admit that sometimes people say that they've read a book and they haven't, you know, I feel like this is the kind of book that is an example. I feel like people want to feel smart saying, oh yeah, I've read that. It was amazing. And I'm like, was it though? Is that really your favorite book? We all have different tastes. It's okay. But you know, my own personal flaw is that I will judge you sometimes based on your reading tastes. We all do it. Come on, let's be honest. Like, <laughs> the next one that I'm seeing that I used to see everywhere is it's kind of a funny story. I read that in 2021, finally got around to reading it. Uh, it was due to a reading challenge. I do appreciate the reading challenges helping me going through my bookshelves and figuring out what's going on. Uh, you're going to see my next reading vlog. Uh, it's a read it or unhaul it. I'm going through a lot of books you're gonna see. Uh, but this one, uh, this is a YA book, I believe, that I used to, again, see going around. It's a contemporary, and you're following this 15-year-old boy who is suffering from mental illness. He's uh, depressed, suicidal, and I can appreciate that it's really sad that the author passed away from suicide. Um, but I don't feel like this aged well, but also I don't think it was ever appropriate to do certain things. So a few quotes that annoyed me. The first one is, I don't like to spend money. Every time I spend it, I feel like as if I'm being great. I'm adding the G because YouTube. How is that ever okay to write that? Um, another one that I wrote down was, win, smile, laugh, hold, walk, skip. Okay, it's gay, whatever, skip. So like, I understand that you're following a teenage boy he is you know, isolated, blah, blah, blah. It still doesn't, I don't care about the excuses. I don't want to read that. So it is what it is. Um, not a fan. I'm sure there are plenty more uh, things that I missed or didn't write down. I now I give it three and it felt very generous. It felt very generous. So the 4.09, I don't, meh. The next one at 4.09 again, we have the selection. I give it two, but, but, um, it's a way fantasy. I feel like everyone knows. <laughs> it's trash. Okay, but it's it's fun trash. I read the whole trilogy, okay? I can complain as much as I want. I read the whole trilogy in a weekend. Yes, I had the flu and I was bored, but this was like, I couldn't put it down. I, I needed to know. Was it awful? Absolutely. But would I do it again? Probably, okay? It, it was fun for what it was. It was entertaining. It did its job, um, but I can't say it was good. <laughs> it really wasn't, but you know, I read the whole thing, so trying to find one that is controversial. Oh, Seed of Bones is there. I gave it two. I think I went back and updated that because I think I gave it three at first, but. Uh, the Cruel Prince 4.07, it feels like cheating to include YA fantasy, but I found this book 
so forgettable. And I read this in 2018. I was not that harsh. Um, this was, again, incredibly forgettable. The romance was freaking ridiculous. I just, no, I, I have nothing else to say except no. <laughs> uh, continuing, same reading, another YA fantasy, The Wrath and Dawn. I read this in 2016 and hated it. That says everything. Um, I just found the romance absolutely ridiculous. Uh, the whole like, oh, he's murdering all these women, but I'm pretty, so he's not gonna do that to me. Um, obviously, not quite what happens, but I, I hated it. I cannot. I've noticed that in fantasy, I tend to be a bit more forgiving of like, oh, the bad boy ends up with the good girl, whatever, or vice versa. And I would never tolerate that in a contemporary. I just can't do it because I imagine like my friends going through it. I'm like, don't forgive him. And like I said, I tend to be more forgiving in fantasy, but this was still too far. He's still mur murdering these women. I, no. <laughs> uh, see, I'm seeing uh, The Rose and the Dagger, which is book two after The Wrath and the Dawn. And the average is 4.05. And I also gave it two stars. This one was so bad with the whole like, I'm pretty, I'm pretty, I'm pretty. I'm sassy, but I'm pretty, pretty. It, it was nonstop. I hated it. I think that's literally my review. Let me double check. Oh, see, I said, so <laughs> that is beautiful. Like really beautiful. Did you know? She's actually beautiful. Everyone thinks she's beautiful. She has a temper, but it's okay because she's pretty, pretty, pretty. Like literally, that's my review. So like, I was petty, but it was nonstop. P.S. I Still Love You, which is book two in the To All the Boys I've Loved Before series. I liked the first book for what it was. It's a YA contemporary series. Um, but my main issue is that this could have been a standalone. Max a duology. Book two felt so pointless. Nothing happens. It's definitely like a filler book. So it's a trilogy. I didn't bother with book three because I was so annoyed. So we'll watch the movies. They were fine. But book two, just filler. Pointless. Gave it two stars. It's the average 4.03. Meh. A Wizard at Artsy. Also something I've been asked a lot about. Uh, 4.01. I read it in 2017 and I really, really didn't like it. I haven't been reading anything else by the author because I really, really didn't like it. I want to read her adult sci-fi books. I have two on my show. I will get to them. Uh, but this was not good. I love magical schools and this is supposed to be that. It's a way fantasy, but I really didn't care for the writing. I felt like the uh, the pace was wrong. I just, nothing in it worked for me. It just wasn't for me. At the time, I gave it two stars. And again, I barely gave two stars to anything. So, mm -mm. meow, meow. Hi. Hi, Chunky. Chunky wants to say hi. Hi, baby. Oh, he's purring. He's the best, but it's way too hot right now. Way too hot to cuddle. I have to turn off the AC, otherwise you can't hear me. Solaris is another example of a classic sci-fi that I've read that I do question my sanity, your sanity, if you tell me that you loved it. I feel like it's a concept that's super interesting. It's first contact with aliens, like it's a different planet where like the, the ocean is sentient. So it's super interesting concept, but reading it was so like the sentences about the waves, like <laughs> I read it just to read it, okay? I will happily admit that because again, the concept, super interesting. I do want to experience it, but I can't say I enjoyed myself. So I think we're gonna stop here because the average is starting to get too low at 3.9 something. I feel like a lot of these were either books that I tried to love when I first started booktube, uh, a lot of popular YA fantasy and contemporaries, and then a lot of the ones that are really popular, but personally, I didn't feel like the target audience. I don't think they're that controversial on here, but on Goodreads, they definitely were. <laughs> so that's gonna be it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. We have a little chunky, a little purring machine, and I'm gonna go start the AC again before I melt. <laughs> I will put the other videos on the screen to check out and I will see you in an upcoming video very soon. Bye.